So have you guys uh, ever heard of carnivorous plants? Well, if you have, I'm going to show you the world's smallest bog garden. Alright guys, what's going on? Justin from at H2O Plants on Instagram. If you're new here, you make sure you've hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on a future video touching on this and giving a progress update. But uh, I was really torn because I wanted to make this video and I wanted to show the start and the end or at least the start and one month in or something like that. But I feel like I want to kind of just get this video out first so that way you guys can see what I'm doing and maybe create your own and have fun this summer or whatever not with it. So for those of you that don't know, I used to live in a small apartment and I kind of fell into aquariums in that apartment and I was quickly very limited on space, uh, nor did I have like an outside or anything like that. And my thinking for what I wanted to do with this is kind of based on that. Now, I can't take all the credit. I do want to give two shout outs to Botany Geek and South Bay Aqua on Instagram. Both of them influenced this build slightly by some of their posts. Now, uh, Botany Geek had posted up a really small nano aquarium pond. It was literally a serving bowl with some plants and soil. There wasn't any livestock that I could see in it and it just looked really cool. It inspired me. I wanted to do something nano because there are a lot of people out there that either A, don't have a backyard, don't have a porch, don't want to do anything outside and maybe they want just something really cool and interesting to do, maybe a project to experiment with and that's what this came up with. Now, then South Bay Aqua on Instagram uploaded some content having to do with a carnivorous planted tank. What it was is it's a planted tank that has a slope that slopes up to the very back rim of the tank and along that slope at the back there's actually immersed grown carnivorous plants along with carnivorous underwater plants. I just thought it was an awesome idea. I was truly inspired by it and it led me to combine both ideas into what I have here. Outside Outside of those two in, uh, inspiring me, I also tried my hand at carnivorous plants last year and I had tremendous failure with it. So much so that I wiped it off my plate and I didn't want to touch it again. But I had that itch again after seeing South Bay Aqua, after seeing Botany Geek and also Rachel O'Leary uploading bog garden videos. It just got me back into it. I really wanted to do carnivorous plants. They're super fascinating. I'm a big plant nerd and I just really want to experience them. Not to mention, uh, maybe a little side thing, I also have a, a slight bug problem here in the fish room. The reason being we have all these tanks with water in them and you would expect that, you know, mosquitoes and other insects that you may not want for around your house are down here you know some plants come from outside they get brought inside mosquito larvae find their way in the tank that's just what happens so uh, with this setup the carnivorous plants will almost act like a natural mosquito uh, destroyer if we will so that's another reason why this was kind of needed and I've this is the reason why I tried carnivorous plants originally is because of the mosquito problem and I had to buy a man-made solution but I really want to go to the El Natural route and I wanted a small bog garden. All right, so here we have the micro pond. Now, I know a lot of people are gonna probably say, oh, that's not a pond, it's a bowl. It is a bowl, but it, to me, it's also a pond. I think it, it to me, it relates like a pond, right? I don't know what, what it, about it it is, but to me, it resembles a pond. It's not a bowl, it's not a fish tank bowl. Um, it's more of a pond. So uh, what we have going on here, right? So this is a $10 light from Ikea. I don't know if it's gonna be bright enough in the long run. I'm gonna test it out and see what happens. But if we have to update it, then we have to update it and get something better. We'll see what goes on. Uh, I got this bowl or micro pond from Home Goods for $12.99. So all together, I spent $23 on the equipment that I needed for the build. Now optional, I did use some black lava rock. Obviously I could used red lava rock that I have on hand but I specifically wanted black so it blends in with the black sand that I put in here now black sand I had uh, or I had white sand I chose to use black sand because I wanted it to be full-on dark with all 
you know, lush green growth eventually. So that was my goal. I didn't want red. I'm not a fan of the red type of substrates or, or rocks uh, in this sort of manner. I, I think it'll look really good like this. Now, what did I do? So I took the lava rock and I hollowed out one of them to place this plant in here. And what this plant is, this is actually called a sundew. More specifically, it's a cape sundew. The scientific name I'm gonna butcher, but it's also a drosera. Uh, that's the species, like the general species of sundews. And then I also have nano or pygmy sundews that are in here. They're super tiny. They're no bigger than a dime and they're just truly amazing. I hope they survive. Like I said, this is an experiment. Um, I don't know if this is going to do well. Matter of fact, in a month I could come back with an update video and say, well, it all died because it very well could. I, like I said, I haven't had a good luck in the past with carnivorous plants, but I really wanted to try something like this. So moving on from the pygmy sundew and the cape sundew, I also have two types of Ultracaria. You'll tur. English, mother. Do you speak it? Yes. I'm gonna butcher the name. I'm sorry. You'll tur. To carry a. Today, Junior. Something like that. Um, they're just two types of almost like a carpeting uh, bladderwort. AKA a carnivorous plant. And what bladderwort is, it's, like I said, it's just like a carnivorous plant, but it has these little uh, traps that trap microorganisms in them, uh, both under the soils, uh, depending on the species, and above the soil, depends on what they are. Uh, sundews uh, are a form of carnivorous plant that secretes a sundew, uh, I mean, a dew-like substance on their leaf, hence the name, um, that attracts insects to them, and then it will actually curl up around that insect and digest it with its uh, enzymes and digestive juices that it has in there and absorb that insect uh, for its nutrients. And that's actually what carnivorous plants do now. So carnivorous plants grow in a region of the United States as well as other countries that don't have any nutrients in the soil whatsoever. Uh, it's completely barren land so they get their nutrients from unsuspecting victims such as insects, small reptiles, and uh, possibly some mammals depending on when, uh, where uh, you are in the world. In the rainforest, there are a lot bigger carnivorous plants that can eat some mice and rats and stuff like that. So uh, you wouldn't think of a plant eating a creature, but they do. So inside of the bowl itself in the water, I have one carnivorous plant that I know is aquatic, and that is Yoltericaria, or it's a form of bladderwort, Gramifolia. And that one I've actually had growing out. It's actually a common aquarium plant that a lot of people try and carpet out. It's called UG. It's relatively easy-ish. Um, it, it, I've heard that it needs CO2, but I, I haven't tested it. So this is gonna be a test of it. If it does grow in this tank then obviously maybe it doesn't need co2 because there is no co2 in this tank so we'll see now if this plant does not do well uh, I may replace it with a different type of aquarium plant maybe something that's a bit easier uh, and just so that way there's something covering the water uh, but up top the other bladder wart should carpet out and this whole mass up here should turn into a green just island you shouldn't be able to see it but it's gonna take some time right it's not gonna be uh, it's not gonna be done in a day now I did fill this up up with RO water. RO water is important to carnivorous plants because they can't have any sort of water that has high TDS or total dissolved solids. Total dissolved solids is essentially all the minerals in the water such as iron, chlorine, uh, salts, anything like that. Uh, because of where carnivorous plants come from, barren soil, they are used to barren uh, conditions. So right now there is about a 50 to 60 TDS and that's between the RO water and the moss or the, the peat moss that the plants were grown in. There's obviously some nutrients in that and that is uh, supplying something. Now I've read mixed things but I don't think you should use straight RO water. I think it should be something with a little mineral content but nothing over 120 TDS. That's what a lot of people recommend and I'm going to go along with the, the recommendations because they probably know more about these than I do. So I'm super excited to see what happens with this. Uh, maybe you guys are too, maybe like this project. You could obviously do this with aquarium plants and other plants, immersed plants, pond plants. I chose to do it with carnivorous plants just because my main goal is to have them eating bugs. Um, if this works, I may set up a couple other ones. I have a couple other uh, bowls and some more equipment that I could use. So it's really just a matter of seeing how this does. So if you're new here, make sure you hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you don't miss 
out on a future update of this uh, project. Um, it may be a complete failure. It may inspire you guys to go out and do something, and that's what I hope it does. Uh, if you enjoyed the video or want to see more of it, make sure you hit the like button. Leave me a comment down below if this is something that you're going to give a try to. I mean, this is super low maintenance. I'm literally not going to do anything to it other than I'll probably do a water change every week just so that way the water doesn't get too stagnant, and that's about it. I'm not going to touch it more than that. So uh, I will see you guys on the next one. I hope you enjoyed. Later.